Urban legends are fun stories to tell your friends and family to creep them out, but some of them are true, and this is one of them. Famous, famous, famous. Not famous. You've likely heard of a plane crash in which the survivors found themselves somewhere desolate in the mountains, had no food, and had to resort to cannibalism, to eating each other, to survive. But this really happened. Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571, also called the Miracle of the Andes, is the flight of an airplane chartered by an amateur rugby team that crashed in the Andes Mountains in Argentina on October 13th, 1972. The wreckage was not located for more than two months after the crash. Of the 45 people that were aboard the plane, only 16 survived. The incident garnered international attention, especially after it was revealed that the survivors had resorted to cannibalism. In 1972, the old Christians Club chartered an Uruguayan Air Force plane to transport the team from Montevideo, Uruguay to Santiago, Chile. On October 12th, the twin-engine Fairchild turboprop left Carrasco International Airport carrying five crew members and 40 passengers. In addition to the club members, friends and family were also on board, having been recruited to pay for the cost of the plane. Because of the poor weather in the mountains, they were forced to stay overnight in Mendoza, Argentina, before departing at about 2.18 p.m. the following day, October 13th. Approximately one hour after taking off, the pilot notified air controllers that he was flying over the pass, and shortly after, therefore, he radioed that he had reached Curaco, Chile, some 110 miles south of Santiago, and had turned north. The pilot, however, had misjudged the location of the aircraft, which was still in the Andes. Unaware of the mistake, the controllers cleared him to begin descending in preparation for landing. Shortly thereafter, the Chilean control tower was unable to contact the plane. At approximately 3.30 p.m. on October 13th, the aircraft struck a mountain, losing its right wing, then its left wing, before crashing into a remote valley of Argentina near the Chilean border. A search for the missing plane was launched, but it soon became clear that the last reported location was not correct. Rescue efforts shifted to the Andes, and the survivors later reported spotting several planes flying overhead. However, the snow-covered mountains made it almost impossible to detect the white plane. Furthermore, the harsh environment led many to believe that there were no survivors. After eight days, the search was called off, although later rescue efforts were undertaken by family members. The crash initially killed 12 people, leaving 33 survivors at the time, a number of whom were injured. At an altitude of approximately 11,500 feet, the group faced snow and freezing temperatures on the mountainside. While the plane's fuselages was largely intact, it provided not a whole lot of protection from the harsh elements. In addition, their food supplies were meager. They had a few candy bars and some wine. That was gone within a week. After a lengthy discussion, the starving survivors resorted to eating the corpses. Over the next few weeks, six others died. The further hardship struck on October 29th when an avalanche buried the fuselage of the plane and filled part of it with snow at that time causing eight more deaths. It was during this time that several survivors began surveying the area for some kind of escape route. On December 12th, with just 16 people still alive, three of them set out, one later returning to the wreckage. After a difficult track through the mountains, the other two men finally came across three herdsmen in the village of Los Mantenes, Chile. On December 20th, the Chileans were on the opposite side of the river and noise made it very hard to hear them, so they indicated that they would return the next day. That next morning, the Chileans reappeared, and they began writing notes on paper that they would wrap around a rock and throw across the water. Their survivor's initial note began, I come from a plane that fell in the mountains. The authorities were notified, and on December 22nd, two helicopters were sent to the wreckage. Six survivors were flown to safety, but had weather that delayed the other eight from being rescued until the next day. Their survivors revealed that they had been forced to commit cannibalism in order to survive, the admission caused a backlash until one of the survivors claimed that he had been inspired by the Last Supper, in which Jesus gave his disciples bread and wine that he stated were the body and his blood. The explanation helped sway public opinion, and the church later absolved the men of their acts. Yordil was the basis for a number of books and films, including the bestseller by Piers Paul Reed, which was adapted for the big screen in 1993, known as Alive. My friends, some urban legends are real. Some scary stories are real. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. 
I appreciate it, and thank you for watching. My friends, as always, adios amigos.